You're listening to KEXP. You can find us at 90.3 FM in Seattle, streaming worldwide at kexp.org. I'm Cheryl Waters, and always so happy to have Francis Quinlan visit the KEXP studios. You just released your solo debut album, Likewise, and so very happy to hear you playing songs from that today. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's wonderful to be here. <laughs> it's Francis Quinlan live on KEXP.
just driving from upstate alone I came in and she had on that white uniform I had my first coffee with her that morning at home Victory cold played it over Francis, again, so fantastic always to have you here at KEXP. Thanks so much for coming in today. Oh, yeah, my pleasure. You've been here a couple times with your band Hop Along, and I know that began as a solo project oh, so long ago. You've been in Hop Along almost half your life now. What's it been like coming back around to the solo format? Uh, yeah, it's true. Almost half my life. It's... Certainly, I, I am very much in a different... I hope I'm in a different place than I was when I was 18. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's an adventure, is, like, the simplest way of putting it. I, there are things that I anticipated. You know, I, I thought I knew... So I, I knew I couldn't know completely what I was in for. Um, and there's plenty that I have certainly taken for granted, being in a band... Uh, full of my best friends who I love. Um, it certainly makes me excited to collaborate further with my band in the future. Uh, the main part of why I wanted to tour these songs solo is uh, that I wanted to travel. I wanted to f merge traveling more with, with touring because touring is very much about the regimented schedule and there's always a place that you need to be that's generally very far from where you currently are. <laughs> and I wanted traveling to be a little more fluid for me. I love to hear that because so many solo artists that make a record by themselves in the studio will then put a band together to go on tour. But you very purposefully decided to make touring sort of a more enjoyable experience for yourself and get out to see some of the places that you're touring. So that was really a little bit of the inspiration for going out by yourself or with Mary, who's on tour with you as well. Yeah, Mary Mary on harp is, is absolutely fantastic. I love getting to watch her every night. Um, yes, I, and I certainly love seeing solo artists with, with bands behind them. It, it can be so sonically rewarding. And it's funny that I deliberately made a record that isn't just myself and guitar, and yet I'm going on the road as that format, it's sort of funny. But I really, it was really important to me once I realized that um, I had been in a one project for nearly half my life, I, 
I certainly am, have not, I'm not sorry at all about having spent all that time writing songs and singing. I mean, I love doing those things. I love writing songs, but I just wanted to add a little more, um, a little more dynamic, I guess, to my life as a songwriter and musician that hopefully strengthens Hop Along as well as my solo project. That's the goal. Talk about uh, the time in the studio because you worked with your longtime friend and bandmate, Joe, who's also a guitar player in Hop Along, yet you used all kinds of variety of instrumentation on this record. What was the time in the studio like with Joe? I know you've worked together on, on in studio on all the Hop Along records, so there had to be some sort of comfort and familiarity there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I started working with Joe back in like 10 years ago now. Uh, 10 years ago, we started working on songs for Get Disown, and he had not officially joined Hop Along yet, but he plays all over Get Disown, that record. Um, it just became clear, you know, a year after that album was out, it became clear that he should just be in the band. He's such an... On top of being an amazing engineer, mixer, producer, he's also a brilliant player, incredible on guitar. And he, he plays bass, he plays drums, keys. I mean, it was wonderful to have that resource. Um, I, one of the big things I take for granted again, like how skilled all of my bandmates are and the band, um, everybody in Hop Along does appear also on Likewise. So it's, uh, been incredible to have their support and creativity added to this record as well. I, I hoped, you know, I, one of the hopes is that I become a better and better collaborator because that also adds to the dynamic of anybody's life, having a multitude of relationships, working relationships. Uh, and Hop Along has kind of, I mean, we every record we make is different, but after a while I realized that, you know, my identity in Hop Along is a rhythm guitarist predominantly. And when Joe and I went in to make Likewise, uh, we realized, I mean, I, I knew going in that I didn't want it to be uh, myself and just a guitar. I mean, I didn't want it to just be a document of me playing. I wanted, we wanted to make a studio record. I mean, that's what we have the most fun doing is just totally going off the rails and exploring ideas that maybe fail. I mean, we tried recording me playing a harmonica on Likewise and it was absolute garbage, <laughs> but it was really fun to mess around and, and hear just just consider a possibility like that. I think there has to be some failure in the studio in order to get to those distant places you want to reach. I don't know if I answered your question, but but we went in just wanting to to be adventurous and yeah, play synths. Joe, you know, was learning Ableton and brought some beats in and it just was such a blast to hear what's possible when you remember that the guitar like any instrument is just a vehicle. Clearly you have become a very adventurous collaborator. You've said that's one of your goals. I'm sure the experience that you've had over many years has uh, contributed to that. And you mentioned the Sims, and you, there's the harp on there, there's strings, there's the programmed beats. So you're definitely going into some exciting directions. What does that kind of, I mean, you mentioned the harmonica, but what does that kind of look like with the two of you kind of putting your heads together? There's a lot of experimentation. It feels like you don't have sort of any walls up, that anything's possible. It's it's pretty similar. I will say it's pretty similar to Hop Along, except that uh, essentially what happened was, you know, I recorded all the songs I wanted to do on my phone, sent them over to Joe, so they were all on guitar. Because that is, I mean, even though I say it's just a vehicle, it is it is the vehicle that I know the best compared to anything else. Uh so they started out that way, and then we would just lay the, the songs down to a click, um, just so we could keep keep the time, uh, with me playing guitar, and then we would maybe do a scratch vocal or something, like a rough vocal, and then just, just start rolling with it. Like, does this song need percussion? Does this song need... And certainly, I mean, just neither of us are predominantly keyboardists at all. I mean, Joe's better than I am with it, but you know, just sitting down with this massive synth library and just going through sounds. That's what we were doing. We were just messing around, going, through, I mean, crazy. I wish I'd taken footage of some of the other sounds we were getting that just were absolutely bananas. But then when, you know, we'd find those moments and we would just roll with that. Um, yeah, I guess we uh, didn't want to worry too much about 
arrangement, the way, you know, Hopalong is such a, a major editing collective. You know, we edit all together, we ar arrange all together. So that really takes time. And in the case of Likewise, Joe and I just arranged in the studio. I mean, the songs, the skeletons were there, verse, chorus, verse, whatever, um, that I would play and sing. And we could just build arrangements off of that. I mean, there were songs where at the end, Joe would just, you know, he called me into the control room and say, listen to this and just tear out the guitar that I initially played. And then, you know, like a song like, um, like Now That I'm Back initially started out with me playing guitar throughout. And then we added the tremolo guitar and the synths and me playing drums um, and Joe playing Rhodes. And then at the end, he just took the guitar out and the song had a completely new identity. Like that's the other thing that's amazing about uh, playing with instrumentation is that you can entirely change the tone, um, the the emotion of a song that that's been so exciting to not worry about um what's being played just worrying about the feeling coming through well one of the songs that really makes me feel something is the next song that you're going to play rare thing and there's a message of pure love in that song at least that's what i hear what's the inspiration behind that song uh so lyrically the inspiration to rare thing i had a dream um I know people don't like hearing when you talk about your dreams, <laughs> but uh, I had a dream about my then infant niece. Um, she She's three now, and in the dream, she uh, was maybe six months old. She certainly was hadn't uttered a word yet uh, and wasn't walking. She's just a little baby. And in my dream, we were in this room full of um, people that we didn't know, that I didn't know, and I was trying to look after her, you know, this great sense of responsibility over this child that I love so much. And she suddenly, you know, climbs out of my arms and walks off and I'm losing it. And she uh, just starts greeting everybody in the room and introducing me to people and just being so comfortable. And, you know, in reality, as a child, she's very brave. She's friendly to everybody. She likes to share. She's just uh, an inspiring person. That <laughs> sounds so nurturing, which makes me want to talk about how you were nurtured as an artist at a very young age. Talk about what that has meant to you and how that has impacted what you do now and how your outlook on the world and your place in it. I, I was very lucky to um, be nurtured by my mother to start with. Um, at a very young age, she told me I was an artist. And I've, I've seen my drawings from my childhood, and they're fine. But she certainly didn't have to encourage me. I, I, I wouldn't dream of telling anybody how to raise their kids. I don't have any myself. But it was pivotal for me to receive that kind of... Because in school... Um, you know, I was mostly strange. I mean, I had some really nice teachers, but I had issues with like paying attention and, you know, drawing first and then singing were places where I could really focus as a kid. And to have an adult tell me that I was good at something, I just can't stress enough how, how much that meant. Um, and then later on, I had an art teacher in high school, Ms. Wagner. Uh, she was my painting teacher, and I spent tons of time in that classroom working, and um, I just liked to be there. She encouraged me to go to this program called the Governor's School, and I went there for poetry, and she told me I would be able to, I, I could find a way to make a living as a painter, which was, again, an incredible thing to be told, especially in public high school, where people maybe are trying to give you more reasonable things to pursue. Um, and she encouraged me to go to MICA, Maryland Institute College of Art in Baltimore. And that was huge for me to, yeah, to have adults like that, um, mentor and push me to work hard at something that maybe doesn't have an, an immediate value <laughs> in and our society. <laughs> And you are a painter in addition to your musical career. I know you recently had a show in New York and you've done all of the artwork for the Hopalong albums and did a beautiful portrait for the cover of Likewise. Tell me about that. Thank you. Um, so for, for this album, yeah, I'm, I'm very, I don't want to use the word controlling, but I, 
identify so strongly with the records that both Hopalong and myself makes that I just really want to be there with the identity of the album all the way to the very end. And then, I mean, I guess I could collaborate with somebody and plenty of bands do that, but I just can't, I think being a visual person, I just need to have my hand in all the visual <laughs> parts of our identity as far as artwork. Uh, and for myself, for likewise, you know, I know that for solo artists, the desire generally is to see a photograph of that person. You know, that's what we gravitate towards the most as far as um, connecting, I guess, with another, with a, with a person's name. I don't know where I'm going with that. but uh, And some of my favorite records are photographs, but I just couldn't, I, I just couldn't be all right with that, with the idea of a photographed portrait of me. And like, what would I do? Would I look cool or something? That's ridiculous. Um, and one of the big inspirations, I mean, I, I was glad in the end, like I, I, I balked against um, doing a portrait of any kind. I just, I, I didn't feel comfortable with that, but I decided to compromise and do a drawn portrait. So at least my hand would be, I would still be, you know, honestly interpreting myself as as honest as I could be anyway. And a record that really inspired me um, was a Frank Blonde's Ocean. Wow. A record that really inspired me was Frank Ocean's Blonde. Goodness. Amazing. Um, I love that his head is in his hand and there's that white border around him. Um, and I like the way the font sits. So that was, I, I kind of borrowed from that a little bit. And as well as Joni Mitchell's Clouds, um, that painting of her is, is beautiful. However, she looks so wise in it. She looks uh, like an oracle. And I knew that that wouldn't quite feel right for me. So I thought I better draw myself looking a bit scared. I love both of those albums as well. What great touchstones for this record. Do you, do you know, did Joni paint that? Was that a self-portrait? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Joni's a brilliant. At one point, I think she said that she considers... She considered herself a painter first and a musician second. What about you? Ooh, I I don't know. I mean, I, I think for, I, I'm just both. I'm trying to do both. I mean, one is I'm pursuing one more as a career, and that certainly changes it, you know? I think if I started to pursue art as more of a, of a career or profession, I'm not really there still, uh, you know, I think that would change it. So I think about that. I'm not sure. Well, we're so happy that you're doing both. And uh, we talked about that song, Rare Thing. You want to play that one for us now? Absolutely. It's Frances Quinlan live here in the KEXP studios. Songs from her new album, Likewise. My love in the dream You were already speaking I was too shy And that's a rare thing for me Sunlight touches on the plants that I've been torturing Yet when I come over, I love that quick delay Before your face alights in recognition 
Quinlan live in the KEXP studios, that song Rare Thing on her new solo album, Likewise, and Mary Latimer on that beautiful harp over there. And up next, went to L.A. and a different guitar. Mm -hmm. That was our first time doing that song together live. Mm -hmm. It was fun. Mary's, uh, Mary plays on a lot of Hop Along records. Um, she's on Painted Shut. Bark Your Head Off, and she's also on my solo record. And how'd you talk her into coming out on tour with you for the extended tour with all the fun side? Um, well, Mary's one of my favorite travelers. I love following her um, her Instagram and other <laughs> accounts, following her. Um, you do that hashtag, pools on earth. <laughs> thing. Mary doesn't have a microphone, so I'm just going <laughs> to... You have to speak for her. It's like, a, yeah, the many moods of Ben Vaughn, like Kevin is my engineer. Mary's on harp. Um, no, but you can really hear her. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, this song's called Went to L.A. Oh, and you were asking, yeah, how that happened. Um, we played together back in 2012. Uh, she opened for my band on our release show for Get to Sound. I met her through my friend Nikki, I think. My friend's Nikki and Paul. And uh, she... I, I hit her up about, you know, supporting on this tour because she has a beautiful project on her own, Mary Lattimore uh, Records and, and all that. Check her out. Tonight <laughs> at the Columbia City Theater here it's in tonight. Seattle. Tonight, it's really happening. I haven't sworn, right? Nope, you cool. have not. Awesome. Sometimes I like black out, so. <laughs> Just got to make it through one more song. Your nerves. Here it comes. It's Francis Quinlan live on KEXP. Summon horses 
that she summoned childhood All the humiliation of having been perfectly understood If I could observe beyond every open mouth May it always end up telling you the truth So beautiful. It's Frances Quinlan here in the KEXP studios. It's always so great to see you. You're always welcome here. Oh, thank you for having me. I love coming through. Y'all are so sweet. The beautiful new album called Likewise. And as you were um, playing that song, I just looked over to my left and it looked like what is a sleeping bag here. And I thought, oh my gosh, are they going to stay the night here? But I see now that it looks like now it's probably just a cover for Mary's harp. It is a nice place. It is a nice place you have your head. Yeah. The vibe is strong. Well, you are very always welcome here, sleeping bags and all. Oh, sweet. <laughs> yes, you're listening to KEXP. Thank you so much again to both of you. Playing tonight at the Columbia City Theater here in Seattle. Thank you for having us. Francis Quinlan, live on KEXP Seattle. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.